Hello and welcome back to another Unix car video. My name is Danny Neville and today we have the Audi R8 Sporting in Tango Red. I absolutely love the rear end on the new Audi R8. I think it looks very aggressive, really has a, has a great stance, and you can see those rocket launcher exhausts at the rear, giving an amplified roar as you, as you belt down the roads. As always, this R8 is mid-engined, mid and you can see the powerhouse within the glass cabinet on display, ready for everyone to see. What I've noticed in the new and latest generation R8 is it actually lights up. So they've put lights either side of the engine, really highlighting and lighting up this masterpiece. So you can see it evening and night time as well. It looks absolutely stunning, and I can't highly recommend how good this looks myself. Believe it or not, these are the standard um, alloys for the R8. And as you can see here for the rear wheel drive version, they're five spoke gloss black alloys, and they look really sporty, giving it much more of a racing car style and feel. If you're ever unsure whether it's the rear wheel drive R8 or Quattro, you can tell by the colour coded blades you see on the side. So you see here it's all tango red on this particular model, whereas on the Quattro you'll often find maybe a black uh, carbon or silver uh, blade instead. But on the rear wheel drive or the rear wheel sport, you'll often find colour coded. Can you believe they, they even include side skirts and side blades as, um, as standard? It really gives a sporty, aggressive look and overall much more racing car like. Something that obviously a lot of people want to consider when they're buying a supercar is how much boot space there is, because this is what really makes a car an everyday usable car or not. And the Audi R8 has plenty of boot space. I certainly have more than enough boot space whenever I need to go shopping, uh, general weekends away and traveling and so forth. So this will give an insight to the boot space for your considerations. They can give my feedback is I always have more than enough space. So you can see here, you literally pop the hatch and lift it up. And if you come in, zoom in nice and closely, you can see here how deep the boot goes and obviously how much boot space you have. So roughly speaking, you can fit a travel bag easily in there. And then obviously you can lay over jackets, dresses, shirts and so forth. Or you could put um, a sports bag in, a travel bag, and maybe two or three or two other sports bags. That's what I tend to, tend to do. I've got more in a space. If the boot space is looking tight for space, which um, obviously everyone has their own requirements, there is a parcel shelf just behind both seats, spanning the whole length. So you can put two or three sports bags there as well. The R8 interior is absolutely fantastic on these newer models. It feels certainly a generational upgrade compared to previous models. You have all digital display, whereas previously you had sort of analog traditional dials. Now you've got all uh, digital display, 12.3 inch digital screen. You can have the map fully exposed in front of you in your driving position, meaning you can look at the road and quickly glance down at the map very easily rather than looking to your left or squinting that smaller screen. Much like a Ferrari, you have start and stop buttons and drive select buttons on the steering wheel, very Ferrari-like indeed. You can obviously paddle shift um, through the gears up and down as you'd expect. And you've also got cruise control with standard on the rear wheel drive. I can't believe how much comes as standard on this model. As you can see here, you can flick through your radio stations, uh, through to the telephone. You can then scan over to your map and zoom in and out off the steering wheel very easily indeed. You can flick over to your fuel consumption um, and memory as well. So whilst this car shows 17 miles per gallon as an average, 
I would say that um, is a little bit biased on a recent journey because I had obviously the, the camera crew in the vehicle. So uh, it's a little bit lower than normal. However, I'd probably say 20 miles per gallon is a bit more accurate. So uh, hopefully that helps when you're buying the car to give you an idea with miles per gallon. Um, then we move on to the radio stations with flick up and down. As you can see here, I can't put the music up at the moment because I don't want to breach copyright. And then you can flip through your calls here as well. So nice and easy. If you want a different view, click the view button and now you can have a more aggressive racing stance and you can just flick through the menu options as you normally would as well. Easy as that. Let's hear this beast start up. So as you can see, this is the latest version of the R8 and sports the brand new front grille and rear end, making the 2021 R8 look even more aggressive than ever before. Dare I say that this R8 looks most like a Lamborghini and the most supercar looking R8 ever before. The R8 is, has always been a, highly, a very pretty car, loved by all ages and sexes, although this new version has to be the most aggressive yet. Coupled with an aggressive look, this is the rear wheel drive version, making this modern feel even more sporty. The rear wheel drive R8 is still mid-engined and its powerhouse is a 5.2 litre V10 engine. You can really feel the power when driving this as you shoot from 0 to 60 in just 3.7 seconds. The speed is eye-watering and your passengers will certainly feel the thrill of the V10. Being rear wheel drive, you have to be more alert and switched on. Fun is even, even more easily achieved compared with the classic Quattro system. Topping out 199 miles per hour, you will certainly leave most cars, if not all, in the rear view mirror. The R8 is available in a few different variations, including the rear wheel drive as you see today, the Quattro, and of course the performance models. You can also buy each variant in convertible if you wish to enjoy the orchestra of this V10 engine even more. Each variant differs in price, starting from 120,000 as you see here today for the rear wheel drive and going up to 170,000 pounds for the V10 Performance Carbon Black Edition. The LR8 is a beautiful place to be and you're very comfortable inside the vehicle. Uh, the interior is very high quality and particularly on this rear wheel drive model which you can see obviously on the dashboard as well. So overall you've got plenty of visibility, the wing mirrors are nice and large, the rear view mirror is, is big enough and you can see over your shoulder, over the engine bay, um, out the rear glass as well. Uh, and the actual driving view is really nice because it has a teardrop style away from the bonnet, so you can't necessarily um, see the end of the bonnet too easily. However, as it teardrops away, you can see around the bonnet area, meaning you won't hit anything either. Um, and obviously you can still hear the engine doing its thing, working and exercising the valves. 540 horsepower, horsepower to play with and they're ready to gallop whenever you need so we can turn this thing into dynamic mode which is the more aggressive setting on the R8 and you can get a flavour of what this sounds like the suspension gets firmer the engine gets louder the exhaust tone gets wider and, raw, and a bit more of a roar it certainly bellows what I find a bit unusual with the R8 and then later later newer models, I suppose with this noise pollution and obviously particularly filters and so forth. It has quite a, what I'd call like a whopping sound or, 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 or a wallowy whopping sort of sound because it gets louder to sort of 3,000 revs, then it dies down between 3 and 4,000 revs and then it gets really loud again and it almost um, sort of really amplifies at the 4,000 rev point. But 1 to 3,000 revs is loud, but not too loud. But when you go over the 4,000, it really does start getting very loud between four and uh, sort of eight and a half thousand revs. And then your car will change its gear automatically for you. So this is just in the standard sport mode setting and the, the holding of the gear will adjust based upon how hard you're holding it accelerated down. So if you're being really aggressive with the accelerator, hold the revs for longer in each gear automatically because Audi's uh, drivetrain and gearbox is very intuitive and it bases it upon how aggressive you're driving the vehicle. 
It does shift down the gears automatically and give it a nice sort of kick back um, at the exhaust, giving it a nice tone and note. Very sporty and racing car like. Um, if, however, you stamp on the accelerator, you see here it holds down to 8,500 revs. I know you're flying. You're absolutely flying. And then it goes a bit more sedate again, making it fuel efficient and obviously adjusting based upon how aggressive you're accelerating, which at the moment I'm not really accelerating at all. I'm just coming off the accelerator to bring the speed down. If, however, you want to go a more sensible speed but still have that very loud exhaust note, you can, of course, just shift down and you can move the seat forward. You can, of course, just shift down uh, the gears to maybe like um, this third gear at 5,000 revs, third gear at 6,000 revs. This is an all-in-all, all in all out and out sports supercar. Very sporty. Um, it's got the supercar looks, it's got the supercar stats, it has the supercar look and feel. However, if you want to drive it today, if you want to drive it a bit more like a normal car, you can. However, it certainly is not a normal car. Thank you very much for watching another Unix car video. My name is Danny Neville. Hope to see you soon. Take care.